Welcome back to Simon Says Farms. We have a special one for you today. We're going to talk about why we do not, thanks, why we do not grain our goats in the fall. And we've got real education happening because mom is here. So before we get started and we've got mom over here, uh, Farmer Liz or the Goat Whisperer to talk about why and when we grain and all that kind of stuff and the science behind it. I'm getting blinded by the sun. We have both alfalfa and our grain. And we're a dairy farm, sort of. I mean, they're dairy goats and we make soap and lotion. We're actually a cosmetic company. That's what we do. The ducks are laughing at me again, but certain times of the year, we don't have to grain the goats. And before I say something wrong, like, or, cosmetic, company? like cosmetic company, okay. That's not that well, our license is a manufacturing license to make lotions and soaps and all that but mom company sounds so big it does sound big we're not big no. how many goats do we have 20 something 28 i think it's 20 goats, like goats in general like 25. 25 25 so what she's doing right now say hi is looking like shit. No. <laughs> okay so what she's doing now you didn't tell me we were making a video today so i did but about 30 seconds ago so i didn't show you for this video but i'll show you something and for I those didn't put my face on for those of you that haven't been around we're watching the live cam right there of the people on that camera way back there. So, so let's get back to why we don't grain our goats. Yeah, but before we get there, if you didn't know, we have a live channel too. The link's in the description below because a lot of people on this channel follow us for pigs. We're actually like 40% men on this channel and like 2% men on the live. So you men, if you want to watch, you know, the live, you can go to the link in the description below. Let's talk about graining and why we don't grain. I'm going to get back on the other side of the camera. Okay. Action. So in the spring when the moms have their babies, we increase their grain immediately after they have their babies. Then throughout the summer, the spring and summer, we maintain their grain. We give them about, gosh, I want to say it's 12 cups a day. So it's six cups at night and six cups in the morning between an alfalfa and a goat grain. And then... It's that thing there, coffee can, right? Or tomato? Tomato. Okay. I think it holds about three cups. Anyway, they get one of these and another one of these AM and PM. We then actually decrease their grain at the end of the summer and early fall to trigger their bodies to dry their milk up before we breed them. Then there's like two or three weeks of you know, actively drying them up. And then we actually increase their grain again about two weeks before breeding starts. We do this, it's called flushing. At least that's what I call it because somebody else told me that that's what it's called. We flush them and that is like this massive increase in, in calories and that's to trigger their bodies to create bigger, healthier, more eggs going into breeding season. We then, so during breeding season, they're actually back up to very close to the amount that they get during the height of milking season, except we only give them that once a day, but that's fine. So we only milk, we only grain them once a day during breeding season, but they're back up to what we would say is a milking portion of grain. Again, that is to help them produce very healthy eggs, a lot of eggs so that they have multiples and can sustain that early pregnancy that we want them to have. Now that we're about a month, month and a half into some of the girls' pregnancies, we are assuming they're pregnant. They did not come back into heat. We will confirm their pregnancies via ultrasound and blood work about 15 to 20 days from now. But because they haven't come back into heat, we're just going to assume, the safe thing is to assume that they are pregnant. They don't need this grain now. So we take the grain away. We don't want to grain pregnant goats too far into their pregnancies. For about a month or two into their pregnancies, it's safe, but really around that three, four, five month pregnancy time frame, no grain, no alfalfa, just hay and water. They are meant to live on grain and or hay and water. So the, the grain is going away. 
They're not gonna starve. They're not, they're gonna increase their hay consumption right now, which is what we want them to do. In the last month or so of their pregnancy, we will introduce a very small amount of just grain, not alfalfa, no alfalfa ever while they're at the middle to end of their pregnancies, just grain. Um, that will be once a day at the end of their pregnancies, about four weeks before their due dates. And it is only about a handful, small amount, just to help supplement their calorie intake towards the end of the pregnancy. Keep in mind that everything they eat at the middle to end of their pregnancy is going to the babies. And if there's only one baby, that baby's gonna get really big and could potentially have birthing complications. And then if you're feeding too much grain, or have introduced alfalfa to the end of their pregnancies, then you could start going into something called pregnancy toxemia, where the pregnancy is actually starting to eat away the energy reserves in the form of muscle of your goat. Obviously that's bad news. Um, the only fix to that is to deliver the babies. And then the other option, the other condition that feeding too much grain at the end of pregnancy can cause is um, something called milk fever. And that is, again, they're taking their energy supplies from their muscle tissues and um, you're, you're causing a lot of issues with their systems. Systematically, they're gonna have issues and could actually die from that. So the, the cure to that is to pump their bodies full of calcium, which is where you wanna bring in a lot of alfalfa hay. But going back to the original topic of the video, we are not graining right now because we wanna set the girls up for a healthy pregnancy. And grain right now is just not what they need. So we will cause more complications in the long run if we continue their graining. So we stop graining now that they're pregnant. We'll pick back up with the graining once they are about four weeks from delivery. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with our farm, we raise full-size dairy goats. And the dairy goats that we breed are bred seasonally. So that means they are only gonna come into heat in very late September, not true. They're only gonna come into heat very late summer through very late fall. So that's gonna be end of August is gonna be their earliest heat. And then say December is gonna be their final heat. Once we're bred, which right now we're sitting in the end of October, all the girls have been bred. We have some girls who are sitting at 35 days bred. We have some girls who are sitting at around five days bred. Big difference, we also know that if the girls that were bred five or six days ago come back into heat, they're gonna get the year off. We are not gonna breed them again because then they're gonna have babies that are in, um, gonna be born in April, mid to late April at that point. And for what we do, that is not something that we um, want. So they would get the year off. Plus at this point, we have already tried to breed them twice. Something in their body is telling us, yeah, today, this year is just not their year. And that's okay. We don't push things around here. We believe everything happens for a reason. And if a mom is not supposed to be pregnant that year, this is mother, way, mother nature's way of saying, um, give her the year off. So what next? So if you follow us over on our Simon Says Farms live channel, where we live stream our goats 24 seven, you'll see um, some different body conditions. And we've talked about in a previous video about body conditions. There's a scale, one through five, one being emaciated pretty much, and five being obese. A lot of our goats hang out in the three, four range. We have a couple that are in the five range. This is all okay, especially going into a pregnancy because we do expect them to put a lot of their um, energy into their babies. So to be a little overweight going into a pregnancy is okay. It's not ideal, but it's just like, you know, I was a new mom at one point and I always wanted my babies to be just a little chunky because if they got an ear infection or they got like some kind of cold, then they go off of their, their milk or their food. And you know, like you do when you're sick, you're not feeling well, they go off of food. You still have a little bit in reserves. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to start into a cold being thin and then, you know, you can get really sick. So anyway, so it is absolutely normal for a dairy goat. It's called dairy character to have their hip bones be visible, have that sunken look along their loin. Um, you wanna be able to feel their ribs, but not see their ribs. And you want to have some meat over the top line, which is their spines, but you don't want it to be so pokey, so sharp is what we call it. 
so we have a lot of goats. Some of them range between like Poppy. She's one of our retired goats. I think she hangs out in like a two and a half. If she's hitting a three, we are doing amazing. Uh, but she always runs thin. Some a goat like Harper, she runs thin. A goat like Rainy or Moo, they run big. We have goats from wide varieties. These are just their normal body conditions for them. Um, there's no standard that says they have to be a three or they have to be a four. Some goats just, that's not in their genetics to be a three. Sometimes they do hang out in a two and a half. Poppy, for example, is a special needs goat. She's just not going to get there. And that's because, you know, she's got special needs. She has like an autoimmune disorder that just means her body is always fighting to stay healthy. So it takes a lot for Poppy to get to a three. It takes absolutely nothing for Moo to hang out at a five, <laughs> nothing. Kind of like me, I hang out at a five all the time. You can edit that part out. No, fine. we're keeping it. <laughs> but so there's some girls, and I've, I've literally heard this at goat shows, when our kids were showing um, at the local ag fairs, the judge said to this one kid, her goat came in the ring as a dry yearling, meaning she's never been bred, and she's about a year old, she's gonna be a two year old in the, in the, uh, the following year. And she says this goat needs to be bred. She's fat. So goats are bred to be bred. And they're bred to be bred every year. Genetically speaking, they should be able to reproduce every year. And I know that sounds like a lot because if somebody said I needed to be bred every year, I'd be like, no, I'm not doing that. That's a lot. Um, but their bodies are meant to do this. This is why we pick genetics that we pick, the bloodlines that we pick are because we're genetically selecting these goats whose mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers have been able to produce year after year while maintaining that healthy body condition. So that's what we're doing here, responsibly breeding the goats, genetically picking the goats that are meant to be bred, not just because they can do it physically, but because they have some parasite resistance, they have great body conformation, they have great milking lines. We don't just breed to breed around here. Um, we like to say we breed with purpose and we breed responsibly in that if a girl does not hit those checklists that we talk about in this video here, the um, health checklist prior to breeding, if they don't hit those marks, then we just don't breed them. So first and foremost, our responsibility to our herd of goats, they are family to us, they are our heads. And this is why we're called fake farmers a lot because you know, all of our goats have names, all of our goats have stories that we talk about. These are our family members. Um, they're not just valuable to us because they're producers. They're valuable to us because we love them and they have unique and individual personalities. So we don't take breeding lightly around here and it's one of the reasons we don't push it. I know this video is about why we grain them and why we're not graining them, but anyway, we digress. So to recap, get back on track because Liz is rambling. We grain in the spring after they have babies, bump up their nutrition to bring in their milk supply. We, we grain throughout the summer and into breeding season. We actually up their grain in during, just before breeding season. And then once they are pregnant and they don't come back into heat after they've had a visit with their boyfriends, about a month into their pregnancy, we actually stop grain altogether. They take the rest of fall and all of winter off until about a month before their due dates. And then we start a very, very small amount of grain back just to help supplement their bodies to get them through the end of their pregnancies. And then we start the cycle all over again and bump their hay, their grain rations way back up after they have babies in the spring. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to not just this channel, but also our Simon Says Farms live channel. And you can watch, they have had conception but now you can watch the whole process from conception to birth and beyond. And we hope to see you on the live cam.